Darkness starts to tremble at the light. 
Well, praise God. Thank you to our praise team for that wonderful song. We love you, Jesus. We'll never stop. Can't live without you. We love you, Jesus. Can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday here at Dove Church. We, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus and trust God is moving and blessing in your lives. And we thank you for tuning in to us and, and allowing us to, to, to come into your homes or wherever you hear our, our services at. And, and all this is, 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 is for Jesus, but it's from Jesus to you by way of us. And as usual, we're going to do our, our confession wherever your Bible is, uh, on your phone, your iPad, your Android device, wherever it is, repeat our confession as usual after me. Here goes. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word brings light and life to all that hear it. We worship you today and we bless you today and we thank you for the precious Holy Spirit that's here with us now and moving through the airwaves. We thank you for the victory we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you for revelation, knowledge, and wisdom that will flow forth today. And we believe we receive it the moment that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Continuing with our lesson series, His Kingdom Forever. This is lesson three, but the topic today is Pentecost and the kingdom of God. Pentecost and the kingdom of God. Jesus was crucified just before the start of Passover. After his resurrection, he showed himself to many people. Jesus continued to teach, fellowship, and even prepare meals. He gave his last set of instructions to the disciples just before his final departure to be with the Father. Pentecost occurred 50 days after the celebration of Passover. It's technically called the Feast of Pentecost. Well, as we move into our lesson, the book of Luke and Acts are really joined together as they have the same author, Luke the beloved physician. But at this time, we want to start off our lesson by challenging a long-held belief that Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit to indwell man, happened in the same room as the Lord's Supper. This was not the case. The place where the Lord's Supper was held was a lodging slash meeting place that the disciples often used. It was known as the upper room. In further examination of the scripture, we find that Jesus gave instruction as to where to go to wait for the promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit. That was in Jerusalem. The word bears this out and says, and we always want to come to the word and, 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 and qualify it by, by, by saying what the word says. Luke 24, 51 through 52 says, Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. It didn't specify a place. It said they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. They were continually 
in the temple, praising and blessing God. Let me say that again. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Notice this verse said continually in the temple, not in the upper room. The upper room was probably, uh, 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 could, could probably not hold 120 people mentioned in Acts 115. And then the question becomes, why in the temple? Well, there is a term in real estate that says location, location, location. Positioning of the apostles and the other 109 or so folk uh, 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 who were disciples of, of Jesus was crucial to the plan that God had for the entrance of the Holy Spirit and the spread of the gospel. Remember I said location, location, location. The temple in Jerusalem with its surrounding courts at high feast times, could hold up to 120,000 people. At the, feast of temple, at, uh, at the Feast of Pentecost, there were capacity crowds. It is fact that many different sects and, and congregants uh, congregated there. The temple had vast corridors and porches, which became regular meeting places of various parties and sects, however antagonistic they were to each other. It was a logical place to meet with a large group of 120 persons there. This group probably occupied a place in the temple. The next fact is Jews from all over the ancient world journeyed to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost held at the temple and its surrounding properties. Since our scripture clearly declares that the temple was the place where they were to assemble for the purpose of awaiting for the Holy Spirit, it said there from our scripture they were there continually. Or that's where they stayed all the time until what was promised showed up. When Luke continues his writing in the book of Acts, Acts 1.14 says this. They continue with one accord. They became one tied cord in prayer and supplication. In prayer and supplication. Supplication meaning making specific requests. With the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. They all were at the temple for the feast of Pentecost with many others. Finally, the day of Pentecost came. And, and, and the technical Pentecost, feast of Pentecost, started at sunrise, where people customarily made offerings of morning sacrifices. They, they burned incense, and they worship and praise God. I would ask myself over and over again, why did they have to wait they did not have to pray the Holy Spirit in because it was promised. What this group did is what they always did. Observe their feast day customs. They prayed and worshiped with expectancy. They also took the opportunity as they gathered, being led by Peter, to take care of some business. And that business was to enter into prayer, and then to select a replacement apostle or disciple for Judas. So while they were taking care of business and praying and believing God, they carried about their normal habits and customs, and then the Bible says, and suddenly, just before 9 a.m., Acts 2 and Two says this, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. 
the wind came first to the place outside where the 120 were gathered. It came first. And, 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 and then it entered and filled the whole room where they were. The wind was the announcement of what was promised was being delivered. The temple was the perfect divinely orchestrated place for this to, for this to occur. Many people at the temple heard the wind and gathered to the place of the sound. At that time, the Holy Spirit filled the 120. Why? Let's look at something Jesus said before he left to be with the Father. It's in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus said, all authority, that's important, is given to me in heaven and in earth, meaning I am the established king of the kingdom. But as king, he needed to empower some powerless people to carry out delegated authority in the earth. You need power to operate in the world as the kingdom. Then in Luke is recorded this, Luke 24, 46 through 49. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold... I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power or filled with power from on high. When Jesus tells his followers to go into the world, how could they accomplish this impossible mission? The answer is because Jesus as king has claimed rule over creation and sends them and us into the land that he has authority over. Then Jesus says this in Acts 1 and 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And many of us stop at that place. But it's not just enough to have power. It's not just enough to say, well, I'm a part of this sect. I'm a part of this group. We're, we're, we're Pentecostal. We're Baptist. We're but the power came for a reason. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And, and, and you shall be witnesses to me. The power came so you can be witnesses of Jesus. Where? In Jerusalem, right where you are. And in all Judea, surrounding areas. And Samaria, the next circle and sphere of influence. And to the end of the world, to everywhere. That's why the Holy Spirit came, so that you could do kingdom work. The disciples needed the Holy Spirit to be a witness of Jesus and to operate as Jesus in the earth. Jesus was going to be with the Father, but they needed power to operate as Jesus in the earth. You need the Holy Spirit to, to witness and operate like Jesus in the earth. 
No, you do not need to die like Jesus for the world. But you do need to engage in kingdom exploits, occupying, doing kingdom business till he returns. It is the spirit who works through kingdom citizens to announce the gospel, the good news that Jesus is king, that Jesus is the deliverer, that Jesus is a healer. He healed then and he's still healing today. That Jesus restores sight to the blind. He makes the lame walk. He raises the dead. He's still doing it today. It is the spirit who leads, guides, protects the citizens of the kingdom in a hostile environment. Yes, it's a hostile environment because they will hate you because they hate him. But because you are empowered to do it, you are able to do kingdom exploits. You are able to overcome. You are able to move. You are able to gain victory. It is the spirit who uses the word to convict, reveal, and change the heart of people. So that through them, the kingdom increases. Once they come to the kingdom, the kingdom increases. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. As the will is done, the kingdom increases. It is the spirit that brings glory to the king. The Holy Spirit is the resident power in the kingdom and must be used by every kingdom citizen to cause expansion of the kingdom. When you get saved, that's good, but that's not all there is. When you get saved, and go on to get filled full of the Holy Spirit, you move into being available for kingdom use to do kingdom exploits. Where is the work? Look on the field. It's ripe for harvest. But the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are, f are few. Lord, we pray for, for folk to come in to reap the harvest. So, so the Holy Spirit is given for what lies ahead. Our mission isn't self-imposed, self-governed, or self-generated. We take our orders from the king who rightfully reigns over the kingdom. Here is the desired result. After they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and they started to have influence, kingdom influence. And Peter stood up and preached one sermon. One sermon. And Acts 2, 38 through 41 tells us some of what he said. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. Be baptized in whose name? In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission, the pulling back of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Or the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children. And to all who are afar off. As many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them saying. Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So he got filled that morning and that day he stood up and preached and 3,000 souls were added. Where did these souls come from? Well, the disciples could not do the same thing that they normally do when Jesus was alive, and that was to go and gather people to the ministry of Jesus Christ. But God, in his wisdom, he didn't position them in the upper room. He positioned them in the temple where the crowd was already gathered. 
So when the Holy Spirit came in, they were already there. They had followed the wind to where it stopped. And so Peter walked out of the, of the room and the place where they were gathered. And he stood up and he preached. And that day, he called folk into the kingdom. And, 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 and 3,000 were added. When you as a spirit-filled citizen come to any situation, you bring Jesus and his power with you. This power is not you, but the one who is in you. The song our worship team sung at the beginning of our presentation today says this about Jesus in you. It says, when you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. Now I need to add something and break up before I continue with this verse. That greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you have Jesus on the inside. You are kingdom rich on the inside. Let me continue with the verses of the song. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. When you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish. And every hopeless situation ceases to exist. I'm talking about when believers show up with their Jesus, stuff changes. Things happen. When you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise because there is resurrection life in all you do. Is it possible that when we come with Jesus, that it's possible to get somebody raised up? And then our chorus just simply exhorts him and says, we love you. We'll never stop. Can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. Can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. And I want you to know that. While he loves you, you need to say, we love you. And we'll never stop. Can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. And we can't get enough. All this is for you. All this is to your glory. Jesus. Well, blessings to you today. We trust you received the word. We thank God for divine positioning. We thank him for location, location, location. We thank you that he always knows where to put us to receive what we need to get. And then sometime when we're out of the place, he is graceful and blesses us. And so with that, happy Pentecost to you. Let's pray. And I want to pray for the salvation of somebody that heard this message today. Receive the word today. God said something to your heart today. You're walking away from this place knowing that God loves you. Let's repeat after me. Repeat after me. If you need to give your life to the Lord, and you want to give your life to the Lord, repeat these words. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you my life. I repent of my sin, and I make you Lord of my life. I believe today in a miracle. I believe that one day, Jesus, you died on the cross. And three days later, you were raised from the dead. And on that confession, I am saved to the glory of God. Well, if you prayed that prayer, find a good local church to get into. A good Bible-believing, teaching, worshiping church. Church that helps you encounter the presence of Jesus Christ. A church that helps you understand what being filled with the Holy Spirit is all about. Blessings to you today. We love you. Praise the Lord again to all of our listeners. 
We thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.